I want you to think back to 2012. Back when YouTube wasn't fully developed. Back when there weren't a whole lot of noise. For me personally, I would only watch gaming videos every day since I came back from school. There weren't a whole lot of gaming channels at the time. I would mostly watch the biggest channels when it came to playing horror games. And I always found myself particularly intrigued with the RPG horror games. Whenever someone, like the old PewDiePie, played an RPG horror game like Misao, Madfather or The Witch's House, I would always watch it immediately, and as soon as new videos became available, I would watch them as well. The RPG horror genre was very appealing to me. Some of the games have a very nice visual aesthetic, and most of them also have an interesting story, and these sort of games are not found in today's horror scene. However, as time went on, the bigger gaming channels moved away from the RPG horror games into the indie horror games we see today. However, there was that one game that nobody ever played, or mentioned even, and very soon was forgotten and lost in time. It's not an RPG horror game, but it definitely gave me the same feeling. That game in particular had an interesting way of conveying its story. Some parts are hidden while others are not. The closest game to date I could compare it to is Doki Doki Literature Club. But it's not a visual novel either. Then what is it? The game that was forgotten by most on YouTube is called Irisu Syndrome. I specifically said YouTube because it does seem like there is a community for it out there. But when it comes to YouTube it only really boils down to me and a few other people playing it. The game was created by Watetsu. That name alone may suggest to you that the game was made in Japanese, but I wouldn't be able to play it if it weren't for Cheerful Tomboy and a few other people who managed to somehow get this game to work in English flawlessly. I was never moved by the hundreds of horror games I played on my channel as much as I was moved by this game alone. All I remember is that I was 15 years old at the time and it was even before I started YouTube. And it gave me such a scare I wouldn't forget. And the game itself doesn't even rely on jump scares to scare you either. Instead it builds up and makes you feel like something is wrong, something is not right, something only you can figure out. The only way to figure it out is by opening the game and start diving into what's going on. It's important before you do anything, place the game in a new folder and take a quick peek at it before you start playing. We have data and replay, which aren't very interesting to look at. There is a Iriso EXE, which is the executable for the game, and below it we have a photo. When opening the photo you can see a picture of three teenagers, two boys and a girl, seemingly very happy in the picture. Now that we have a good idea what's in the folder, we can open the game. Right off the bat we are greeted with a basic main menu screen. With a rather weird looking figure in it, she has a blank expression on her face and wears something that looks like a cosplay of a witch. With the addition of bunny ears of course on her hat. Something very odd that stands out right away is that she's holding a sock which she took off herself. The sock looks like it has some serious weight in it as it appears to be full and by the way it's tilted. We don't know anything about the figure and why she's dressed and holding a sock. And she doesn't appear to be in a group picture we've seen earlier in the game's folder either. Alongside the figure there is a title screen and three menu options. Start, Album and Ranking. We already know what Start does and Ranking is just a page with all the high scores. The most interesting option here is the album which appears to have 5 grayed out pictures that you can't interact with. You can also hover over the tile screen with your mouse and click to switch melodies. Well that's about it for the main menu, let's go ahead and start a game. Wow, what is going on? There is a bunch of grayed out shapes in different colors on the floor, we have other shapes falling from the top, there is a bunch of zeros in the middle at the bottom, and next to it there is level 1. In the background we have animals seemingly killing themselves jauntily, and there is actually someone in the background looking at me. Well first off, let's not panic, but this is how the game goes. This is a puzzle physics game. 
You have two walls on either sides of the screen and two more on the top and bottom. These four walls together form a game area. Shapes are going to fall down from the top and you'll have to match them with other shapes that have their respective color. You'll move them around by shooting blocks out of your mouse and you'll always be shooting upwards, so keep that in mind. You can shoot a normal block with a left click which moves in a relatively average speed. And with the right mouse button, you can shoot a stronger grey block that moves quite faster. As shapes continue to fall from the top of the screen, you'll actually have to shoot them to activate them. And once you activate them, they will be affected by gravity. If you successfully hit a shape with the same color, both of the shapes will shine bright. At the moment they hit the floor, they'll break and give you points. While the shapes are shining bright, you can shoot at them one more time to try and make them hit other shapes with the same color to get a chain reaction. The more shapes you get in the chain, the more points you'll get as they break when they hit the ground. But be careful, as shooting it more than once will break the shape mid-air and you'll gain no points. Another thing to look out for is if you hit a shape with a different color from the get-go, it too will be active, and any active shape can turn other shapes active. So be wary to not make a chain reaction of active blocks, because once an active block hits the ground, it will turn darker just like the ones on the floor and it will cause you to lose health. While we're at it, let's talk about the health system. The meter at the bottom is a health meter, and once it empties out, you lose the game. As time goes on, you lose health over time, but losing an active block on the floor will make you lose a small chunk of health in addition. The only way to replenish health is by having bright blocks break on the floor. Don't worry about your bright shapes not hitting the floor though, as the darker shapes also count as a part of it. And if you manage to hit a bright shape with a darker block from the same color, it too will break and give you even more points in health. It also clears more space at the bottom, which makes it a bit easier. Here's a little pro tip for you. While the shapes shine bright and are ready to break, they won't activate any other shapes besides the shapes that have the same color as them. But since you only get to shoot at it one more time before it breaks, it's usually a good idea to shoot at it the grey block, which is much stronger and packs a lot more punch. That way you'll be more successful at creating chains of the same color and get even more score and health back. You may have already noticed that the game area is actually rather small. Any shape that falls outside of the game area will not count, so you can use the gap on the top part of the walls to throw away any shapes that you can't match. On top of that, be on the lookout for any inactive shapes that are within walls. Some shapes will go inside or outside the game area, depending on how close they are to either of them when activated, and you'll have to deal with them as they may not interact with the walls, but they will definitely interact with the floor, Every so often, your level will increase. After breaking a few shapes, you'll hear this sound and gain one level. The higher the level, the more score each individual shape is worth, which can lead to a big jackpot if you chain in a high level. But be on your toes though, as you progress in the levels, the health you lose over time increases. The difficulty of the game also increases with the levels, as every few levels, a new color is added into the mix, which in turn increases the difficulty of the game little by little as new colors are added and make and matching shapes a little bit harder each time. If you find yourself constantly waiting on shapes to fall, or you'd like to wait a bit before deciding which shapes to shift or match, you can scroll with your mouse wheel and move time forward. Of course, this nice feature is not without its shortcomings. If you have active blocks, they too will move faster, so be very cautious when using it with active blocks. On top of that, some shapes that fall from the top are faster than others, and moving forward time will make them jump a great deal of distance, and since they're already moving fast, you'll have a moment's notice to react, which usually ends up badly. Health will deplete faster when you fast forward time but you'll lose the same amount of health if you just wait it out, so don't be afraid to use it. The shapes that fall from the ceiling are random, but they do follow a certain pattern. There is three different patterns in total. The most common one is scattered. Shapes fall as normal at seemingly random places with random colors, and there is a lot of space between each shape, so you have a lot of room to maneuver and make moves to match. The next pattern, that also happens to be my favorite, is stacked. In this pattern, you'll have just what seems like a wall full of shapes and colors falling from the top, waiting to be matched, and they're all moving slowly at the same pace. I recommend to wait a bit and see how the pattern turns out. Let it get a bit close to the floor, 
and then start matching shapes from the top. When you are knocking the shapes from the top, you want to be careful to not knock it upwards, but rather downwards. It may seem tricky due to the fact that you can only shoot upwards, however, if you put your cursor inside the shape and shoot a white block, it will only move ever so slightly and start falling immediately downwards, and each shape that is matched from the top will start falling and matching any other shapes that they come across. The next and hardest pattern to deal with is quick time. In this pattern, you'll have shapes falling at random, like in the scattered variant, with the exception of shapes moving much faster. The most dangerous of combination is having the quick time happen with a bit of stacked. The smallest mistake can cause a dozen of activated shapes to fall like rain and lose you the game. Which brings me to the next point. What actually counts as losing a game? Well, you can't really tell how well you're doing apart than getting score. On the later stages of the game, you may get a visual cue if you're doing good or bad, but other than that, you'll only find out how well you're doing in the ending of the game. Lastly, we have this magic ball. It's a small ball that changes colors frantically, and whenever it touches a shape with a certain color, all other shapes with the same color disappears, and depends on the amount of shapes that were erased, you get health back. So sometimes, instead of making a big combo or chain, you may want to forfeit the combo to use this magic ball and get health back. It depends on how much health you have, so make your decisions accordingly. Be cautious, as if it hits the ground, the ball will break and won't delete any shapes. You can also shoot projectiles at the ball, but it too, like an active shape, will be affected by gravity and you'll have to control it steadily and make it touch a shape you want to erase. Just stay on your toes when doing so, as the ball feels heavier than shapes, and countless times while I was doing it, I ended up hitting the wrong shape as I couldn't control the ball well enough. It is very valuable when you're trying to get a high score, as the amount of health you get back is bigger than a large chain, and it can clear a lot of shapes from the bottom and eliminating the risk of them stacking up. One last thing I want to address is what's going on in the background? The background is very odd and consists of cats just doing what exactly? Well, there is a cat in a poisonous cake. There is a cat falling down headfirst into deadly spikes. There is a cat sleeping in a microwave and a cat that straight up hanged itself. It's a very peculiar sight for sure. And you'll have to get used to it as it is the background for your game area. What could it all mean? Why are they all here? I couldn't tell you. We'll definitely get back to it later on. And yes, in the background, there is someone looking straight at you while you play the game, inspecting and watching your every move, very unsettling to say the least. I felt very uncomfortable to play with this girl in the background staring at me, but after a while I got used to it, it didn't have much of an effect on me recently when I played it again for the review. But I think that's just because I play too much horror games that I'm prone to it. Despite not being spooked though, I can definitely understand if people are unnerved while playing just by this alone. My best advice if you find yourself preoccupied with this whole situation, just try and focus on the game and matching shapes. You'll quickly get immersed into it while listening to the incredible melody in the background. Speaking of which, I love the music in this game. It's absolutely top notch and goes very well with this sort of game. I found myself just forgetting about everything around me and lost within the music and the game for hours. Even after all this time I already spent playing in the past, playing it from start to finish for this review was a blast, and you can just switch to equally as good melodies from the main menu logo and just continue playing and exploring the game. What happens after you lose a game? Well, if you thought someone in the background looking at you was unnerving, then you better take a look at this. Every time your health reaches zero and she slowly comes to the foreground, then you know the game is over. 
And after each game over, we get a picture. This picture is added to our album. After all that, you get thrown to the main menu. But instead of starting a new game, go to the album and inspect the picture we just got. By hovering over the picture, we'll be able to look at it and inspect its details. Click the picture from the album, and then you'll get a short dialogue between the characters in the picture. Ah, the sun is good. Good, eh? So, about tonight's dinner. Uh, I have no idea. That's too bad. Let me guess, is tonight dinner canned food? Are you still going on about that? It sucks. Wait, there's no way we can catch fish here. We can't eat canned food either. We have to cook for ourselves. I brought the ingredients after all. I wish our dinner was grilled sea bream. Shut up and help me cook. Nah, that's too much trouble. I need to draw more illustrations soon. I really couldn't ever depend on YouTube for survival. <laughs> With each picture we uncover comes some dialogue for context. The context this picture and dialogue provides us seems to be about a group of three people who went camping, as they appear to be in the beach and talk about preparing dinner. However, the picture and dialogue are not the only way that the game conveys its story. Let's look at the folder of the game again. Taking a peek at the game's folder reveals some new files. We now have a file we can't access called save.dat. That's just simply our save data, so if we wish to reset our progress in any point of the game, we can simply delete this file. However, the interesting files that were added to our game's folder are a request and curtain rise. So, the game has a request it'd like to ask us? Let's open the file and see what it's about. To everyone, day one. Everyone is getting along for now. In the hopes that you don't show unnatural behavior, I earnestly thank you. Everyone is getting along for now? In the hopes that you don't show unnatural behavior? Something here ain't right, but reading this request seems like there is more to this trip than just your average get-together. Let's take a look at the second note. Concept on an island, the outbreak of a serial murder incident. The actors are three people. Edogawa, his role is to disappear first. Uji, his role is to disappear second while going to search for Edo. Irisu, her role is to remain until the end. So, we seem to be some things together. As this note says, there is a plan for a serial killer outbreak on an island. And the people in it are listed as... actors? As if it's some sort of a stage play. Do they even know they're actors? And have you checked the picture again? Let's take a look. The picture seems to actually be untouched, so there is nothing new here. However, the people in the picture are the same people from the picture in the album. Why would that be outside of the album? I feel like it's starting to get a bit confusing, so let's organize the names in the notes to the people in the picture. The bright-haired guy on the left is Adagawa, and the black-haired guy on the right is Uji, but the name of the girl in the middle of them is still unknown to us, as Irisu is the girl from the main title screen, and she's also the girl looking at us while we play with the shapes. Now that we organized the names we got and check in the folder, it's safe to drop back to the game. So just a reminder, a download link for the game is available in the description, in case you feel like playing the game later. And don't worry, I am going to drop a spoiler warning when we get to crucial plot points in the game. I guess since we dropped the game and you guys don't want to see me go through a full round, I can fail immediately for you guys. We just got a new picture added to our album. So why did I get a picture after losing immediately, you may ask? Because this game waits for no one. It's a heavy rain type of deal. You screw up, there is no game over. The game continues and there will be consequences for failing. So let's check the album. They say that the witches change experiments. Uh, you're quiet. What's wrong? 
You really are bad with this sort of thing, aren't you? No, it, it's not that. I saw it just now. I saw some person with weird clothes. What do you mean? You know, like an apparent dress. That kind of odd skirt and clothes. Wearing a hat like a witch's, with rabbit ears sprouting from it. A, a person like that was standing and looking at me. What's that? It's not like a Dogawa's ghost story. It's a rabbit witch. I saw a figure in the distance. Uh, here. Someone beside us was here. It seemed like that person was watching intently, silently staring at us. Maybe you were just seeing things. No, she was a bit far and she left quickly, but I definitely saw her, I'm sure. I wondered if I was seeing things, so I felt bad and tried to forget it and didn't say anything to anyone. But I really saw someone. We'll all be materials for the witch's experiment then. Ah, stop it, stop it. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was too funny. Let's sleep. You'll forget about all this in the morning. From what it seems, Edogawa is telling a spooky story about a girl in a witch's clothes and a hat with bunny ears, which looks very much like someone we already know, and scaring both of his friends in the process. Let's take a look at the folder now that we're done with the picture. Within the game folder, there is a new text file called To Edo. We will gradually begin from nightfall. Please appropriately make up some ghost stories, like we planned at our recent meeting. Incorporate what we talked about into your story. This text file is specifically addressed to Edo, and he seems to know something the others don't, as the story he told was pre-planned already in a meeting. On top of that, the note reveals that whatever sick plan is happening, it is planned to start right from that night of the story. Before we move on, let's take a quick peek at the photo. The photo seems to be unchanged once more, but it's always good to check everything in the folder for any changes, as we are doing it after every single round. Well, I guess it's all clear, so let's go on to the next round. So at this point, we are getting a picture after each game we go through, but how do we know if we're doing good or bad exactly? Well, it has something to do with the score you get before the game ends. If you score less than 20,000 points, then you may be doing bad and sooner or later you'll find that out. But if you reach 20,000 or more points, then you're doing good. But it's worth mentioning to not stress over the score too much. You can score below 20,000 but still be doing fine if you do well in other rounds. There is one more thing however, but we'll get to it in the next round. We just got another picture added to our album, and this is the first time we got a picture with only two characters present. Let's inspect it. Mmm, it's delicious. As expected, curry should be left overnight. What's wrong? Why the gloomy face? Edogawa hasn't come back yet. I'm sure he must have gone fishing again. But it's been hours since he woke up. Don't you think he's taking too long? I said there is nothing to worry about. Yeah. So according to the new picture in our album, Edogawa has gone fishing and he is taking too long as his friends notice his absence. Let's check the folder again. Usually after each game we get more text files to give us some additional information so we can make more sense of it. Uh, after checking the folder, there doesn't seem to be any new text files. So Edo is just gone and we don't have any information of his whereabouts. I guess since there is nothing for us here, then we better head back to the game. Oh wait, I forgot to check the phone. Edo... Gawa? He's erased violently from this picture with a black marker. Just the way this whole thing looks. Edo Gawa didn't go fishing, did he? Someone being erased from a photo like that, it's, it's just the same as putting a V in a checklist for a serial killer. The game for the first time did not give us any new information by text. But it didn't have to. It showed us all we needed to know in a single picture. The game not only can spawn text files in your folder, 
but update existing files as well. This is getting freaky. I did promise I'll give you some more information regarding the score, so here it goes. Score is not only a way to determine if you're doing good or bad in the game, it also plays a part in hiding some dirty secrets. Depending on what score you get, it too can spawn secret text files in your folder, but not all secrets are available from the beginning too, as you have to obtain some pieces of the story before they become available. But there are some that can be uncovered, if instead of scoring 20,000 points and double your score to 40,000 points, then take a look for yourself. This, this unsettles me every single time I watch it happen. She looks so deformed. She looks inhuman. What's going on? Her eyes are red and, and her chin look like a smile. Oh yeah, the game continues no matter what. We just got a new picture added to our album. This time, Uchi and the other girl that have been dining in the morning are seen in a forest looking for something. Edagawa-kun, where are you? Huh? Huh? Oh, uh, what is it? I, I think I heard something over there. Really? I didn't hear anything. Wait here, I'll go look. Huh? W wait! Hey! Be careful! It's fine, it's fine. I'll be back soon. They finally decided to go look for Edogawa, and Uji claimed to have heard something and went alone to check it out. He did promise he'll be back though, so I guess no worries. Without even thinking about it, we check the game folder. After a quick inspection, we find a new text file within. And it's addressed to... Uji? One person is erased. From around here, bit by bit, the climax is coming. Edo should secretly vanish in the dead of night. Uji, please suggest going to search for Edo. Disappear and notice when you find a chance to do so. The climax is coming? Edo disappeared intentionally? Uji's in this too? We are getting close to the point of no return. Something big is going down, and still there is so many questions. If Edo vanished on his own accord, how come he was erased so violently from a group picture? It just doesn't seem right. Uji also doing the same and was planning on disappearing unnoticed too. At the moment he left her in the forest on her own. They're plotting something that involves her, but she doesn't know it. A quick look at the photo reveals that Uji is yet to be erased though, and remains unchanged through this transition. In this point in the game, the score is very important. Let's head back into the game. Just sadness, anger, a plan that went right, or 
did it go wrong? Our album is almost full, and we just got the last picture we needed to complete it. Let's check it out. Edogawa kun? Satoru? Where is everybody? The girl is left by her lonesome next to the cabin, not knowing what's going on, not knowing where Edogawa and Uji could be, and most importantly, is not going to see what's about to come. Checking the game folder for new files reveals a new text file simply titled Irisu. Irisu contains the following message. This message contains nothing. You can't scroll up or down, left or right. The only thing that this text file contains is her silence. The silence before the storm. Let's open the picture. Edogawa didn't go fishing. Just like Uji did not hear anything in the forest, now too, they share the same fate. Whatever that is. I actually cannot continue without plastering spoiler warning all over the screen. I'm about to discuss some major plot points and the ending. We inspected the last picture in the album, and we reviewed the new files within the game folder what happens in the last scene depends if we did good or bad with playing with the shapes. You may have noticed some visual cues of me doing bad. So, let's just hop right back into the game. The last round. I'll end it. Next on the news. University students have gone missing. A single body has been discovered. Breaking news. New male body identified. From the thief, Edogawa Takeru. Police still searching for whereabouts unknown. He was murdered so brutally to the point they had to match his teeth to confirm his identity. The other two are still missing, and due to the state one of them turned out to be, the other two probably met with the same fate. But how? I mean, we do know there was a plan for a serial murder to strike, but at the same time, two of the victims of the outbreak were taking part of it and were well aware of the plans. Did they not read the terms of service of the plan where it says you will really die and just accepted it? Each one of them got notes detailing what they need to do. Did they just follow it mindlessly? Or perhaps the bigger picture was hidden from them and they were playing right into a trap set by someone. Someone who is no short than plain evil. The ending features a dark room. And the only light we see is emitting from the TV on a breaking news broadcast. 
Irisu is sitting silently, listening to the broadcast. She's probably not one to care for the news, but she was still listening to the TV. She made the news after all. The news report revealed the fate the three missing students met. And throughout the entire thing, Irisu stays silent, not saying a single word. It's time for us to check the full... All three students are violently erased from the photo. Edo, found dead. Uji, missing. And lastly, the girl in the picture, her name is Ageha, is missing. The way this plan was executed tells us Irisu had something against Ageha in particular, as the whole idea of the plan was to make her frightened and lonely, slowly pushing her into a corner, only to make her last moment that much more terrifying. I do have some issues with how it turns out though. The ending suggests a successful plan was executed flawlessly, but there is one thing that doesn't align with this conclusion. When I think of a killer who executed his plan perfectly, I imagine them being happy. I imagine they would smile and laugh upon how smart they are and how well they were able to execute this plan. But we don't get that kind of a reaction from here. Instead, we get an emotionless reaction, but even an emotionless response from Irisu doesn't seem that far off actually, as some killers can just be that cold-blooded. But we did get an emotional response. It's not within the ending though, but two rounds before the ending, you saw it. She was breaking down in tears. She was sad, she was crying and she couldn't stop. As the next round, she was still crying uncontrollably. That is not the response of a plan going right, but quite the opposite. That is the response of a plan going wrong. But where exactly did it go wrong? We already found out she killed Edogawa in cold blood when he went fishing. But if killing was not on the agenda for her, she would have cried after killing him too! But she didn't. She looked completely normal as the other times when we got through the first two rounds. We were able to find out that the plan went wrong, but we don't know what went wrong. Due to these confusing cues we are getting from looking at the story, we are unable to answer anything. Not yet anyway. What we have right now is three dead students a sad killer, and unanswered questions. Uh, maybe getting the good ending may shed some light on this situation. Time to delete our save file and start anew. So after going through the entire game doing well, there weren't actually any noticeable changes. The files that spawned in the game folder are still the same, the picture still reacts in the same way towards Edo going missing and Uji. The only real difference is in round 5 and 6. Irisu didn't cry this time and had the same reactions across the board. Which can only mean one thing. Everything is going according to plan. It's time to go through to the next round.
the only two left. Where did everyone go? that you don't show any unnatural behavior. I earnestly thank you. Please appropriately make up ghost stories. What is this? Hey Kyuko? Hey Kyuko, are you listening? Dada 2 left us alone here. Where did they go? What's with this picture? What are these notes? Hey, answer me! Where did they go, Kyoku? Say something, Kyoku! I knew it! You're always watching Satoru, aren't you? You're always glancing at him in class! It was really obvious, every time, and I saw you. You were picking at Satoru's notebook, as you pleased. What were you thinking? You're not an, in elementary school, smiling while looking at the notebooks, and getting all excited over Satoru's drawings. Were you just that jealous of us? To the point that just saying, let me see, wasn't okay? You know? I thought something was weird about this trip. You did it while I wasn't looking, didn't you? Where did you take Satoru and Edogawa-kun? They're somewhere, right? Where are they? Where have you gone, Kyoku? Here is Kyoku! Kyuko? What's that look? Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks.
A happy ending. Uji and Edo are well, and the whole serial killer thing was just a joke for a surprise party. I'm baffled her friends would actually do something like this. That's like the most mean birthday I've ever seen. Asking why she's crying when she thought it was her last moments, and she's going to get outright murdered. Oh wait, we have a new file in our folder. What's this? What with a strange person I saw and Adagawa's ghost story, it seemed like they were in on it all along. I knew it. I think that it was too absurd. Yeah, really. Anyhow, what a tactless surprise party. Well, but they did work to that extent for my sake. That makes me a little happy. Incidentally, I said some terrible things to Kyoko, huh? Though, it didn't really seem like she was listening. Sorry. But really, though she has some strange points, she's not a bad girl. She's always coughing and her throat seems bad, so I can't help but worry about her. Next time, instead of something so lively, I want to go somewhere quiet, alone, with Satoru. Speaking of Satoru, he's still drawing those creepy pictures. Endless cutely drawn pictures of suicidal cats. Ah, jeez, I really wish you'd stop that. I tried bugging him about it, but it seems he doesn't care. I recently realized that he seems to be imitating the style of some foreign cartoonist called something or other. In that case, draw rabbits like in the original, I said. This time around, it really seems to be suicidal rabbits. On the recent trip, he also seemed to bring a sketchbook. How much do you love it? Well, since I'm a cat lover, it's better than cats. Just kidding. This note is interesting. Apart from being truly surprised by the tactless surprise party, she shed some light on some interesting information, and not just in this note, but when she was shouting at Arisu too. So we finally have some explanation regarding the background of the game. We know that Uji made it, lots of suicidal cats all drawn by him, and he's very passionate about drawing suicidal cats, as he brought a sketchbook with him on the trip. Is there any reason why it's in the background of the game? At the moment we don't know the answer. Furthermore, we don't know why he is even drawing those cats in the first place. All we know is that he's very passionate about it. That's a bit unsettling. But it might just be a hobby, which is completely fine, I don't judge. He did draw something else though. According to Ageha's note, he also drew suicidal rabbits. We haven't seen any of those, but we do know that it exists. Uji is turning out to be a bit weird, and in a bit of a predicament as well. If what Ageha says is true, when she was shouting at Irisu moments before she got banged in the head, she actually said some curious things about Irisu after she found out the notes. She claimed that Irisu was always glancing at Uji in class, picking at his notebooks to her heart's content without his knowledge, and smiling while looking at his drawings. The drawings of the cats? Is there something amusing about suicidal cats that I'm missing? How come Uji and Irisu are enjoying these drawings so much while I'm over here feeling unnerved seeing such a cute animal doing these acts? Can they possibly symbolize anything? That was not the only thing Ageha was throwing at Irisu either. She also said that Irisu was jealous of them, and by them, she means herself and Uji. I guess it does sound like Irisu definitely likes him, as she glances at him in class and looks through his personal stuff. Uji found himself in a dangerous love triangle, as he is loved by a girl nagging him to draw dead rabbits instead of cats, and a cold-blooded killer enjoying his current work of the cat drawings. Originally, we thought there were three people on the trip, but since Ageha knew Kyoku's presence, we now know that there were four people on this trip. Actually, if you scroll back through the album to the first picture, you can see bunny ears right behind the rocks. The same bunny ears on the hat Kyoko wears. We never saw Kyoko outside of the first picture, so I guess she was sort of stalking them with a costume for the ghost story, but whenever she was with them she switched back to her normal clothes. Even though we never really saw her in any other pictures, 
up until the ending where they both settle, and by settled I mean Ageha being a mini and then getting bonked in the head by Irisu. Another interesting point I thought I should touch on is the last sentence in Ageha's note, the part where she says, well, since I'm a cat lover, it's better than cats. Just kidding. She's alluding to the fact that drawing dead rabbits is better than dead cats because she's a cat lover. She said just kidding right after, but in every joke there is a little bit of truth. And to contrast that, you have Kyoko going through the suicidal cat's notebook and smiling while looking at it, which indicates she either really loves the art style or she just hates cats. The fact she never smiles through the game caught my eye, but smiles at that particular thing. Now it makes a bit more sense for the Uji drawings to be in the game area, as Hirisu is in it too. So if it was all a joke, simply an over-the-top surprise party going really smoothly, Irisu definitely didn't have anything against Akiha and didn't have any intention of harming her, right? Going back to the photo now reveals it is clean from any marks, just like the way it started. However, there is something odd going on here, an important event that may indicate something is still going on. When you get the bad ending, you can just go ahead and play, and the game sorts of resets itself, the album is wiped, and you have to go through the rounds again and gain those pictures to add to your album. Nothing odd there, but when you compare it to what happens after the good ending, you definitely notice a change. When you try and play the game again, it doesn't reset itself, you don't get a new picture after each round. In hindsight, it does make sense, you did beat the game after all, therefore there is no need to reset it. You'll notice if you just go into the game again and lose a bunch of times, nothing will change. She won't cry, you won't get new pictures, and the circle continues. You can play as much as you want since you've beaten the game. But why? Why would the game allow you to play again? Nothing is happening, and she's still looking at you with the same look. Wearing the same clothes? As if she's still plotting something. It's as if the game expects something. Expects something from you, the player. Do you remember what I said about secrets? The first secret I revealed to you about the score is the scary looking Irisu without much of an explanation. And with that I said that there are other secrets, but they can only be activated in a certain point. What will happen if we try to get a high score to trigger this nightmarish version of Irisu one more time now that the game is over? Well, this is what happens when you attempt it. Uh, nothing happened. Well, we definitely didn't get a picture, but wait a minute. What's this? It's a small face of a cat. Why? Well, I'll expand more on it later. In case you're wondering, I didn't go through another round to show you a picture of a cat, but rather to show you another picture, which you are all very familiar of. Ageha's face is missing? Scratched over violently with white color. But why? Just a second ago, we saw Kyoku celebrating Ageha's birthday. For God's sake, she was the one who organized the entire thing. She was the one handing out notes to Edo and Uji. She was the one who came up with the brilliant plan of a serial killer outbreak as a surprise party. She was the one who thought of it all. So why all of a sudden is Ageha marked again? Well, 
We saw Ageha's note. How about we take a look at the other side? In the folder, a new text file emerged. Lately, I've been taking cough medicine without restraint. This note contains some of the darkest secrets and answers to our questions. Those two were happily talking again today. It's annoying. Noisy. Those two next to me are noisy. What in the world is so much fun? I wish everyone would just die. Today, my eyes met with a lone boys. He gave me a nod with a bit of an embarrassed smile. He was cute. Ujima Satoshi-kun. That was the kid with a cute smile. The gentle kid who even gave a kind smile to someone like me. He's always alone. Just like me. One day, I picked at Ujima-kun's notebook. There, a strange world was spread before me. Many pencil drawings. A cat cooking an earthen brazier in a sealed room. A cat flying a kite in a thunderstorm. A cat killing itself slowly with tobacco smoke. A cat struck in the head by a falling bullet, which had been shot straight up from a gun. Illustrations expressing such hatred towards cats were lined up. He's like me, a person with the same feelings. That time our eyes met was fate. And since that day, Ujima-kun and I have been together. These lectures are the one chance I have to be happy together with Ujima. We always sit four empty seats apart. Some way or another, it became like this. I love that I can feel him through his odd sense of distance. Uji and I meet several times a week, sharing the same place and time. It's been so long since I've felt this happy. Yes, not since the time I would play with it in elementary school. The distance between us now is like the wire mesh from back then. I won't let anything rip through this mesh. I won't allow it. It won't happen this time. There's nobody to come between us. Uji won't be eaten up. By the way, I haven't talked to Uji yet, but sometimes our eyes meet. I wonder when the day we speak will come. Lately, that annoying idiot and cat girl has been doing things with Uji. What is this? I can hear them talking. The three of them are going on a trip? What is this? What is this? Leaving me alone? Taking Uji along as you please? What do they think a person's loved one is? That thieving cat! The coffin. It won't stop. It won't stop. After all that's happened, I finally understand what I need to do. Each one of them has to. The plan has been refined. Them and I, us four, will go on a trip to a remote area. I will kill Ageha and Edogawa. Exams, library, opposite me. Those three are laughing about not knowing anything for tomorrow's ethic tests or something. I make an effort to modestly address them. <coughs> the three of them stop their conversation and look over with puzzled expressions. This moment of being stared at is unbearable, although an unpleasant feeling sticks in my chest. It's fine. I can do it if it's for Uji's sake. I will feel the distance between us, little by little. I was absent from the lecture, if it's fine with you. Can I copy your notes? This time, I certainly went down the rabbit hole. The reason I couldn't go through with it was just because of my feelings. I intently destroy odd things in the cold, inhuman reality of the strange world on the back of my eyelids. It's a game I've played in my entire life, ever since my lonely childhood. As I play the game and calm my heart, my feelings of insecurity have somehow disappeared. 
Now I want to think such fickleness of mine from the bottom of my heart, I almost crossed the point where I could no longer undo my mistakes. At that time, I was utterly strange. Firstly, there is no need to lure my loved ones to the scene. And that stupid guy, he's an idiot, but harmless, so there is no need to do anything to him. The target is that cat. Her alone is good enough. Breaking open a packet of cough medicine, I smoothly pour the white granules into my mouth. This makes 30 packets. Ephedrine and codeine fly about my medulla oblongata and sympathetic nerves. In my hazy, drunken brain, thoughts spin and turn. Last time, I was too interested in looking to entertain myself. This time, my feelings will not waver. This time, I'll cut emotion out of the equation. I will dodgingly attempt to construct a flawless plan, and if I succeed, alone with Uji, our backs to the sunset, we'll admire those beautiful drawings together. After reading this note, it shows us that Irizu Kyoko actually is a cold-hearted killer that care only about getting Uji, and she will not stop at nothing to achieve that. She formed some sort of a relationship with Uji through their distance. She related to Uji because like her, he was alone. When she took a look within Uji's notebook, she saw his passion of drawing cats killing themselves in creative ways. Irisu liked these drawings because she hated cats. Her hatred toward cats isn't really explained in this note, but she seems to hold a grudge against cats, as she describes Ageha as a cat, and that she must be killed in order to get Uji. She really doesn't like cats. What did the cats ever do? When she hears about the trip, that's when she decides that their fate is sealed and secretly started plotting a plan on how to get rid of Erogawa and Ageha so she'll be able to be alone with Uji. Keep in mind that she haven't even spoken to Uji yet. At this point, we also hear about her throat. She took up to 30 packets a day to help her with her aching throat. That doesn't sound like a normal sickness to me. And the fact she takes so much medicine makes her much less stable. Some more interesting parts from the note is how she views Uji, especially this part where she wrote, It's been so long since I've felt this happy. Yes, not since the time I would play with it in the elementary school. According to this part, there was something else that made her happy. As we already know how cold Irisu is from the inside, the fact something made her happy is very important, as these things scarcely exist. She describes it from elementary school. I could only imagine she's referring to a pet. Right after, she writes, The distance between us is like the wire mesh from back then. I won't let anything rip through this mesh. I won't allow it. It won't happen this time. Wire mesh? That's a very specific description. Since we just established that the it she was referring to was an animal, it was most likely inside a cage, hence why she described the distance between herself and Uji as wire mesh. Because the distance between her and the pet, the one that brought her happiness and kept her company, was behind a wire mesh fence. In addition to that description, she also writes something about ripping through the mesh, and that she won't allow it this time, meaning something broke through the fence, and she won't allow the fate of the pet in the cage to happen to Uji. This time, she's going to be a lot more calculated. This time, she will avoid any unnecessary killings. This time, she had a target, and she's determined to not fail. If emotions will try and get in the way, she will ignore them. For Uji's sake. This note contains so many secrets, but there is still a problem. There is still many problems, in fact, but before we explore this any deeper, I want to divert your attention back to the game. You can still play it. It still doesn't reset. And it still looks like it's expecting something. Let me tell you what it's expecting. It's expecting you to play. It's expecting you to try harder. It's expecting you to go above and beyond. For Uji's sake. It's expecting you to reach over 100,000 points. Now, if you have played the game, you may know how hard it actually is to reach such a goal. 
Since this game is a puzzle based on physics, so you don't actually have full control, not to mention the fact that with each level you pass, the speed in which you lose health over time increases, and in the high level it increases drastically, I had to pretty much stay with laser focus on the game at all times, making as little mistakes as possible, taking advantage of every single magic ball I came across, and believe me when I tell you I've tried reaching 100 points so many times, and sometimes when I tried to reach it, it was in vain, as even if I did reach it, it would not work. The 100,000 points mark will only reveal its secrets in this point and no other. Going for 100,000 points before you reach this point will do nothing. Once I got to that after ending point, I tried again and again for a long time. I sometimes got angry, sometimes I was sad, I got lost around my own thoughts, spinning and turning, until I was in control. I was... in full control. I did it! <laughs> oh man, I tried so hard. I got lost in that world and finally I got it. The 100,000 points. What did I get though? Well, I got a photo. And it's naturally not in the album, so let's check the game folder's photo. It is unchanged oh wait there is a new file and for the first time the new file that was generated was not a text file but rather a png file it is titled yutaru what could it possibly be what the hell is that what am I looking at? What is this? Who made this? It looks so demonic and evil. It looks like something we've seen before. It, it, it's a rabbit. A red demonic looking one. Filled with rage. A rabbit that is missing his left ear. But... Wait a second. What's that behind him? The way this is all laid out... He doesn't look like a part of this drawing. And he's covering the actual drawing behind him. Behind, we see a head of a rabbit, expressionless, with red eyes, next to two small rocks, and by the looks of it, he has a small puddle around him. Since his head isn't attached to his body, it's safe to say that he's laying in a puddle of his own blood. What are we looking at? How did we get this? Why would someone draw this? I don't understand! This was hidden behind such a high score! I can only think of one person who could have drawn such a thing. Ageha's note says it all, and according to her note, he really did. But I have so many issues. There is so many things here that doesn't make sense. If Uji really did draw this, why would he draw it like that? Most of his drawings seems like all the suicidal cats are doing it to themselves. Hence the suicidal part. But this drawing in particular is anything but self-inflicted. Look at the drawing again. How would he be able to inflict so much damage? His head literally ripped apart and his body is nowhere to be found. It looked like someone else has inflicted these fatal wounds. Why would Irisu cry about the death of two other people? When she killed someone already and she was completely emotionless. None of this makes sense. Why does her throat hurt? Why does she dress like a fucking bunny witch? Why is she calling Ageha a cat? Why does she look like this when you do very good? Her chin looked like a fucking big smile and she looked like a giant rabbit. Oh yeah, that one time she cried? Did she cry uncontrollably because that round we killed Uji? 
Is that why ever since that round we kill Uji, she cries uncontrollably in the rest? Sure, but why would she kill him? You read the notes, she says she likes him. Everything she's doing is for his sake. What could have possibly happened that made her change her mind? You saw it, the ending where one dead body is found and the rest are missing. She can kill them, it's a possible scenario, but what could have possibly changed that made her kill him in tears? It was all planned after all. I'll tell you what, none of it was planned. Ageha is not a cat, and Uji is not a rabbit. And please someone tell me who killed the rabbit? Who killed- I remember a story from a while ago. A popular cat. The misery of a sad rabbit. And between it all, a lone girl. Why do I remember all this? That's surely... You made it this far, huh? Would you like to see a part 2? I already have most of part 2 gameplay bits recorded, but whether or not they make a part 2 depends on how much support they get in general. If you wish to support my channel, the best way to support me is by doing what you're doing right now, which is watching my videos. So thank you so much for watching my videos and do check out my other videos. Wait, you're still interested in supporting? Well, I have a Patreon page. You can go to Extra Mal and check it out. It's important for me to note that supporting me on Patreon is completely optional and is totally not required if you're interested in watching my content. I do not gate any content and it is completely optional. So only if you're feeling generous, check it out, I suppose. I'd like to give a thank you to all my patrons and channel members for supporting my channel. I really appreciate your generosity. And lastly, I'd like to give a thank you to Nitro Rad. He gave me tips and pretty much steered me in the right direction and gave me confidence on making this video. So thank you so much, man. I don't know if I would have made this video without you. Welp, that was my first review video. This was a pilot for my review series and if everything goes well, I'll make this a permanent addition for the channel and I could make this every few months or every couple months. I'm very excited. Thank you so much for watching my first review video. I'm gonna hopefully see you in part two. That one is gonna be crazy. We're gonna solve all the mysteries and answer all the creepiest secrets. Rah! I don't know how to end this video. I'm just baffled I've actually made this. So <laughs> uh, see you in part two, I guess. Bye. Take care of yourself.